Something absolutely incredible and something really wonderful happens during fertilization, or that super brief moment when the two cells combine, creating the first cell of a future organism. This is literally how you and I were made as well. And a few years ago, the scientists discovered that during that moment of fertilization, something absolutely mind-blowing happens inside the cell. Hello, wonderful person. Today, we're going to be talking about exactly what happens. Something that was recently reanalyzed and discovered in some of the other animals as well. But let me actually just show you what I mean and show you how incredible it looks. Here's what happens when the cell is fertilized and becomes the first cell of the organism. There's a beautiful firework, a beautiful explosion that seems to permeate the cell. The firework that's been detected and visible in a lot of different organisms in a lot of different cells. The unusual firework that's sometimes referred to as the embryo flesh. You just saw one right here and you're about to see a few more as each of these cells is fertilized. Now this unusual event usually only lasts a few seconds, but it's extremely explosive and it's actually visible if you were to look at this using fluorescent microscope. Now, what you're actually looking at is an explosion of various metals. Specifically, the scientists believe that it's an explosion of zinc and manganese. And this is literally an announcement to all of the other cells around that this cell has been fertilized and is now going to be creating a new organism. It's as if nature itself is celebrating the creation of a new organism. At least that's what it looks like symbolically speaking. In reality, it's a very complex signal that tells other cells that the egg is now closed for business and no one is welcome inside anymore. Well, let's actually discuss exactly what happens and what the scientists have learned from one of the recent studies that as always you can find in the description below. So first of all, a lot of these developmental biology studies and studies on how cells connect, how cells fertilize and what exactly happens with the sperm and the egg have actually originally been done on the organism that you see right here, known as the sea urchin. Because the eggs and the sperm of sea urchins are actually quite large and also quite easily visible, a lot of the studies on early development were actually done in these organisms. Later on, the scientists also started using some of the other cells, such as the cells from mice, for example, and some of the other organisms as well. But in modern biology, scientists actually hope to use human cells, but usually it's ethically extremely difficult. This video, however, is from a human cell, and this is from a study from back in 2016. You can learn more about this in the link in the description below. And so the scientists were actually trying to figure out, do all organisms have these, or do only some organisms, specifically more advanced ones? Now they've discovered that, for the most part, a lot of complex animals seem to have this as well. For example, eggs from the cows and eggs from different types of monkeys also exhibited this as well. But more primitive organisms did not seem to have this. And so the scientists were really trying to figure out, so first of all, I guess, when exactly did this start, evolutionarily speaking? And would a more primitive organism, such as for example a frog, have this as well? And so in this study they decided to use the eggs from the African clawed frog. Mostly because they're really really large and they're also quite transparent as well. And they really wanted to see if these eggs would also exhibit these unusual zinc flashes. And just as you can imagine, by observing these eggs over and over, they were able to detect zinc and manganese flash coming from these eggs as well. And what this implies is that, well, first of all, this unusual event seems to happen in other animals that are less primitive, specifically in animals that are separated from us by about 300 million years of evolution, which also implies that this is not a newly developed mechanism. It's something that very likely existed for a very long time, and also very likely exists in a lot of different organisms that possess sperm and egg. But I guess it still doesn't really explain to you what all of this is for and why exactly the cells go through this unusual firework-like celebration. Now I'm calling this a celebration just because it looks like a firework, but in reality this is a very interesting and somewhat simple yet somewhat intriguing signaling system. And here's sort of how all of this works. So we know that when it comes to fertilization there are at least three major steps before the egg becomes fertilized. The first step is for the egg to actually announce their presence to sperm and to somehow attract them. This is usually done through the method known as chemotaxis. A certain type of a protein released by the egg attracts the sperm and kind of guides it to the location of the egg. And for the more complex organisms, if you were to look at the structure of the sperm, the head of the sperm contains the structure known as the acrosome. 
And so once the sperm locates the egg, usually what happens next is a somewhat complex multi-step process referred to as the acrosome reaction, also known as the sperm activation. All of this is done through the interaction with the cell wall of the egg, where certain sugars, once they attach to the front of the sperm, initiate this process where the entire sperm starts to transform, eventually releasing its content into the egg cytoplasm. But this is of course in a perfect scenario where there is only one single sperm. We know this is not the case. There are a lot of sperms competing for the same egg. And so something needs to happen in order for a single sperm to attach to a single egg. And so during this acrosome reaction, the egg essentially activates. In other words, it does the firework that you're about to see. So this right here is following the acrosome reaction. Or essentially when the sperm is finally attached to the outside of the egg and is about to go through a lot of other processes. But because the egg is actually really large, usually at this point, other sperms can still sort of connect to it and bind to this region you see around the cell that's known as the zona pellucida. And so during this acrosome reaction, the egg releases billions and billions of atoms of zinc and also some atoms of manganese. And it looks like there's only one reason for this embryo flesh. All of this zinc almost instantly tells all of these cells in the zona pellucida to disable and to start shutting down, creating a kind of a hard shell or hardened shell around the egg. And there's really only one purpose for this to disable other sperm from essentially reaching the center. And so as soon as all of these cells in the outer shell harden, they're simply unable to bind to any of the new sperm cells and reject everything else. And so I guess in reality, even though to us this looks like some sort of a firework or celebration, in reality this is a signal literally disabling everything around the egg. And so even though normally we think of cells being regulated by, for example, proteins or genes, in this particular case, it looks like it's actually zinc and manganese that are directly responsible for preventing any problems with fertilization and for essentially allowing the organism to develop normally. This signal naturally allows the cell to start developing, to start dividing, and to prevent any potential problems with having too many chromosomes in the same egg. And even more interestingly, the amount of the actual flesh or the size of the flesh also seems to represent the quality of the resulting embryo. But since this is something that was discovered in a relatively old organism, this of course also implies that this is a really old technique, something that the cells have been using for hundreds of millions of years. And so the fact that our cells use this mechanism of using metals to signal each other is definitely something very intriguing and something that might actually lead to some new discoveries in the future. For now though, honestly, this is definitely one of the coolest things I've seen when it comes to cells and especially human cells and also is a great reminder of how life over time has found solutions to a lot of different problems, with some solutions being really simple, simple metals released by a cell in order to completely deactivate different other cells and in order to prevent problems from happening. And since this is a relatively recent discovery, I'm sure we'll learn so much more about this in some of the future studies. But until then, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.